Okay, so let's go through this practice set. Now, the few of the questions I've written them myself, so that's why they're pretty poorly worded. But obviously you don't get that in VCAR, but I was just trying to um, invoke some theory out. So we'll work through it together so that you've got, make sure that you're covered. All right. So we have um, a right angle triangle here and the size of the angle JLK. So when they say that, it's the letter in the middle, that's the angle they want. So they want that one there. Okay. Now, because it's a right angle triangle, we can use Sokotoa. So if I was labeling up what I have, I have this one is the hypotenuse and this is the opposite side. So I would be using sine angle equals O over H and then the angle actually equals the inverse of, and then you just pop those in 0.7 over 1.3 and we get an angle of 32.5 degrees. So what's that closest to? I would say B33. Just gonna pause it for a minute. Okay, so the next one, the diagram shows a rectangular prism or a cuboid. The dimensions are marked and the length of the diagonal is closest to. So what you gotta be careful with here is that the diagonal is what triangle you're going to use is you're going to go across the ground there. So I might go across here. And then you're also going to use that side there. So if I draw that triangle out, what I'm doing, so there's the one across the ground. So, and this is, that's where A is. So A is there and we've gone from the B corner. So this is the bottom of A, this is still A. And the red line across there is what we need to know. So you know that this is 10 centimeters. Now, you don't know this blue line. This blue line is the diagonal. This is the diagonal across the ground, across the floor, across, yeah? So you need to be able to get that red line because this is the question up here. You need that blue line to be able to work it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the triangle on the ground. So this triangle along there. So what I'm saying is that there's the blue line. So there's B and A, and this is across the floor. And that's what I wanna know. And here I can see, so here I know this is 24 centimeters and this little bit along here is 16, isn't it? Yeah? So 16, so I'm using that right angle triangle down on the floor. So I'm gonna use that to find out what that one is. So if you look here, this is a right angle triangle. So if I went back to that sheet, I'd say yes. Do I have an angle? No, I, the only one I know is right angle. So I'll use Pythagoras. So this one would be x squared equals um, 24 squared plus 16 squared. So you guys can always use solve, comma x, and we get x to be 28.8. Now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that's okay to call that because it should have been bigger than 24 because it's the hypotenuse. All right, so now I know what I just found out really was the blue line. So I now know that this one is 28.8. And now I can do Pythagoras again to find this one, so I might just call that y. So it'd be y squared equals 28.8 squared plus um, 10 squared, and you'll find out that y equals, um, what does that one equal? 30.53 in the end, okay? So that's what, sorry, that was for question two. So what was the length of the diagonal? 30.53. All right, from a podium P, a girl walks due west to get away from a boy. So remember what I said, we've got to start drawing these diagrams. So I'm gonna say, here's my podium P. And remember when I said, make sure that you put your little light compass in there so that you hopefully will see parallel lines. All right, 
So a girl were, walks due west from the podium. So due west would be straight along that line. And that's where we've got the girl. So we put the girl. And once again, it makes it a lot easier if we put in our light little compass thing. From the same podium, a boy has a bearing of 285. So if we were thinking from the same podium, remember a bearing you start at north. If I got round to there, that would be 270. So 285 will be somewhere out there. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So we go out. So if I draw that, a line out here, and here I've got the boy. Okay? And once again, maybe just put a little bit of the compass in there. So why do I do that? So that I see other bits of the picture. So remember, if we went to the west line, it would be 270. So if you do 285 um, minus 270, doesn't that give you 15 degrees? Yeah? So I'm going to pop in 15 degrees is this little bit there, the extra bit. Would you agree with that? Yeah? Um, and then they said the bearing of the girl, uh, uh, sorry, the bearing of the boy from the girl. So when they say from the girl, that means you start at the girl's um, north line and you go until you reach the jo line that joins them together. So from the girl is 35. So we know that that is 35 degrees in there. Now, because she went due west... That's 90 degrees in there. So what's 90 minus 35? That would be 50, 55 is there. So that's how I've worked that out. Now they want, the question is, they want the size of P, B, G. So it's the one in the middle that they want. So they want this one here across there. Okay, but I've worked out what should a triangle add up to? Yeah, good. So this is going to equal 180 and I'm going to minus the other two, which is 55 plus 15. So 110 is that angle there. There's the answer for that one. Okay, a model housing estate which borders a highway is in the shape of a triangle. Um, the side of the model estate that borders the highway has a length of two metres and then the area of the model is 20 metres squared. So when you get these things, it's like they're doing similar figures. You know, like if you go into a development, uh, development office of property and they have one of those displays of the, the land or whatever. I don't know if you've seen that. They will. They'll have a big display. That's what they're talking about. So they're saying that, so really, say you've got the model, so the model, and it's in a, the shape of a triangle. So say there's the, I'll just call that's the freeway. So you've got a model and it's got a triangle, and then you've got real life, okay? So in life, it would be a much bigger scale, whatever, but there would be the highway, okay? So what they told you here is when they said, um, the side of the model of the estate that borders the highway has two meters. So they just told you that this, I'm gonna say this bit is two meters. And they also said the model has an area of 20 meters squared, okay? Now, they said the actual area of the housing estate is 72,000 meters squared. So they told me what this one was, okay? Now, when they're asking the question in the end is they want the length of the border along the thing. So what they want is this length here, okay? So they want a length. So when they want the length, you need to use the length ratio to be able to compare, okay? But I was actually only given the area ratio, so first of all, let's work out what the area ratio is because I know it's 20 to 72,000, but we should always simplify first, yeah? We need to simplify our ratio. So that means, because 20 can go into 72,000, can't it, yeah? So 20 goes into that once and 20 into 72,000, goes 3,000, 
600, okay? So what you're really saying that for when there's one meter squared in your model, it's actually works out to be 3,600 meter squares in real life. So how do we go? We wanna to go to, we wanna take this and get to the length ratio. How do you go backwards? How did we get to, how do we do that? Do you remember? So when you wanted to get to the area ratio, you took the length and you squared it. So if you wanna go backwards, what would it be? Yeah, good. So the square root of one and the square root of 3600 will take us back. So the square root of one is one and the square root of that is 60. So now you have a length ratio. So for every meter on the model, it's 60 meters on the, in real life. So if you've got two meters on the model, yeah? So if you go, oh, and I wanna know what it is on real life. So therefore, but we know the scale is one to 60. Oh, sorry. You could probably have worked this out in your head though, yeah? So you go solve, comma, x. And what does x equal? It would be 120. So this, in real life, that it's 120 metres that um, borders the highway. Okay, question five. A distance of three centimetres on a map has an actual distance of 2.34 kilometres um, in real life. The scale of the map is, so when you have a scale on a map, so a map, a map scale is actually similar figures, what you do, you'll see it, you have one to something else. So what that means is if you have one centimetre in on the map, Whatever's out here, it'll tell you what centimetres it is in real life, okay? So it's always a one to something else. So if you look, they gave us three centimetres is the same as 2.34 kilometres. So I want to change that kilometres to centimetres. So to get that, isn't there 100 centimetres in a metre? Yeah? and then a thousand meters in a kilometer, okay? So what you really have is three centimeters is the equivalent to 2,334 centimeters, okay? Okay, now that's not, that's three centimeters to that. We wanna do, we want just one. So I'm gonna divide that one by three and I'll divide this by three, and that's gonna tell me the answer. So one centimeter is the same as 7800 centimeters. Okay, so you could leave it like that. Okay, um, it could be written one centimeter is equal to 780 meters, but on a map, they actually like to keep it one, the same units. All right. So question six, a solid cone has a volume of 167.55 cubic centimetres. The height of the cone is 10 centimetres. The radius to the nearest uh, centimetre of the face of the cone is. So you should be looking and going, what you need to do is just go, right, I've got a cone and I've got a volume. So what will we do? Go write the formula for volume of a cone. So if you don't know, volume of a cone is pi r squared h over three. So if you've got your cone, um, the h bit is the height, okay? The radius is the r, and that's it. And that's pretty much what we need to know. So if they told you already, so you know, that 167.55 is equal to pi. I think, I believe radius is the question. Yeah, the radius, sorry. What do we want, the radius? So pi times r squared times the height, which they told us is 10 
over three. So you've only got one unknown, so we can go solve, comma, R, okay? Now, it's said to the nearest centimeter, you might find that R is 3.99. So what should my answer be? Nearest centimeter, four centimeters. Um, question seven, calculate uh, the distance C. So here, I'm gonna flick to our um, triangle thing to show you again. Let's go with this. So this, I'm labeling up this little triangle, little B, little A and C's the question. So I've just gone through that chart and worked out that C is found by going A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C, okay? And then you're gonna plug in the values for that, which is five squared plus 10 squared minus two times five times 10 times cos 67. So the more you do, the faster you get. So I don't have to look up the formulas all the time, which makes me a lot more quicker. And that's, the, that's what makes the top get you a good mark, is being quicker because you can check. You've got more time to check. All right, now it just said calculate the distance C. It didn't say any decimal points because this was me writing it, so I should have. So I'm just gonna do two. So 9.27 centimeters. When I get that answer, I go and have a look at the triangle. Yep. 10 and five, it's not unreasonable, so I'm hoping it's okay, yeah? Good things like that help you find a mistake. Redoing your work won't, because we do the same mistakes, okay? So have a look, if you think it's pretty okay, then you might be all right. So find the perimeter of the triangle. Don't give away an easy mark like that. So what do you have to do? Just add them up. That is so easy, yes? So even if you had no idea how to find the one before, make up an answer and then add them up because you can, you know how to do that, all right? So that one ended up being 24.27 centimetres for me. Okay, what is the magnitude of angle B? They ju it just means what's the size. They use the word um, magnitude for angle, okay? So I need to use B. So if I went through that flow chart, is it a right angle triangle? No. Do I have more than one angle? Yes, because it can include the question. So I've got 67 and now they want me to find another one. So when I said yes, I'm gonna use the sine rule. So I'm gonna use B over sine B because that's the one I need. And then I'm gonna use the one that I've got, which I've got C over sine C now, okay? So if I, Substitute all that in. So B is 10 over sine B equals, and this is what I found before. Okay, and you just pop in solve. And because I kept it as B, I'll do sine B. And I get B equals 83. I'm just going to round to the nearest degree. You use cosine, so that's okay. That's fine. All right. So you could use cosine if you wanted to. You just had to use some other. Uh, you had to use this C, yeah? So for the cosine rule, yeah, you could have used that as well. That's fine. Sometimes there is more than one way. Okay, question A. Determine the surface area of the shape above. So you've actually only got half a sphere. Okay, so really what you've got, you've got this top bit. So this top bit is half a sphere, but you've also got the base, yeah? You gotta make sure that you add the base. So surface area for a sphere is, and you've only got half of it, so I've got half, but the surface area for a sphere is four pi r squared and the area of a circle, which is a circle, is pi r squared. Okay, now be careful, what is the radius? They gave you the diameter there. So what- Is it three pi r or four? It's four pi r squared. Okay, is the circle. Is the surface area. Yeah, no, but half of it. Three pi. So when you look at this, this becomes two pi r squared, and then you've got another one, so how many is that all together? See, 
So the formula, so you might have looked, was half a sphere on your formula sheet? Might have been. Yeah. Same thing. Just be careful, the radius is only what? 1.25, yeah? They gave you a diameter there, be really careful. So you got 3 times pi times 1.25 squared. And what did that end up being? I got 11.78, is that correct? 14.7. Yeah, because I think I did this one, I remember. So the answer is 14 point, now did it say any decimal places? No. So I'll just say 7.3. Um, this is surface area, so it's centimetres squared. Okay, need to make sure you put your units in. Yep, sorry, metres. Okay, so let's go on to this one. It says calculate separately the total surface area of the cylinder, including top and base, and the rectangular prism, including top and base, as seen in this diagram. So they wanted, you have to be careful, they want the whole surface area of those two individual shapes. So um, you just have to make sure that you're using the correct rules. So total surface area, um, for the prism, so the bottom bit. So remember, the total surface area is two times, because uh, this is a square base, so then there's the other one. So it's two times length times width, two times length times height, and two times height times width and all that, but because it's a square. So hopefully you get 248 centimetres squared, okay? The volume of a prism is, you know, length times width times height. So it would be 18 times 18 times 25. So 8100 centimetres cubed. So just make sure you're using the right units, yeah? Centimetres cubed for volume squared for area. Okay, total surface area of a cylinder, including the top and the bottom. Oops. Sorry. Total surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So if you plug all those things in, you should have got 980.18 centimetres squared. <coughs> And volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So this one would end up being 2261.95 centimetres cubed. Okay, with part B, the cylinder is completely filled with water and then the water is released into the prism underneath. How high is the water in the prison. So what's gonna happen is you take the full volume of this, okay, whatever that is, and it drops down. When it drops down, won't it fill up in that bottom down there to a certain extent, won't it, yeah? So what you gotta think of is you'll have this new rectangular prism. It's like a rectangular prism of water, isn't it? Now. It will take the base shape, won't it? Yeah? So it will definitely be the 18 by 18. Yeah? Because it'll spread across that. But what you do not know is how high it's going to go. Yeah? But you know what the total volume is because the volume was the whole volume of the cylinder. So that volume is going to equal, what was that one? Two... 261.95, yeah? I've just simply taken that. All right, so the way I'm going to work it out is I'm going to say, well, volume of a cylinder is length times width times height. I know that the volume is 261.95. I know the length is 18 and the width is 18 and the height is what I want to know. So that's only one thing I don't know. And I go solve comma h and I get the height of the water is going to be uh, 6.98 but it said in the question 
to the nearest centimeter. So what's my answer going to be? Seven centimeters. Okay, so with the next one, you're doing it the other way round. You're putting all the water from the rectangular prism, which is, um, how much did that hold? 81, yeah? So we're saying the volume, the 81 volume from the prism is going to go into the cylinder. Okay, oh God, I can't spell. Anyway. So, a cylinder's volume is found by going pi r squared times h. Now, we know the radius is not going to change on that cylinder, which was, what was the radius? Uh, six, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, and the height is what we want to know. How far up would that water go? And so, it's doing the same way, but then we go comma h. So, we end up with h equals 71.6, but they said to the nearest um, centimetre, if you have a look here, nearest centimetre, so I'm gonna say 72. So h equals 72 centimetres. That's what the cylinder would have to be if it was gonna hold all the water from the prison. What they've told you, when they say the dimensions are tripled, so what you had is you had your length, they're giving you a length ratio there. So what you had, to begin with, you had just what it was, which is one. If you've tripled it, that means you've times it by three. Does that make sense? So this was the old and this is the new dimensions. So when they ask you what factors have the total surface area done, so surface area, so when you do sur um, area ratio, what do you do? You have to square it, don't you? So you've actually got one to nine. So by what factor has the area gone up by? It's gone up by nine. Can you see that? because it's one to nine. So if I triple the length, the area's gone up by one to nine. And if I look at the volume, don't, when you do volume ratio, don't, what do we have to do? We cube it. So it'd be one cubed to three cubed, which is one to 27. So how much has the volume increased? If it was originally one, now it would be? It's 27 bigger, isn't it? Yeah? All right? So that's just a way of asking that. When they say what factor, what's it been times by? So the, the length got times by three, but when you do that, it means the area will go up by nine and the volume will go up by 27. Does that make sense? That's what they're asking, yeah? And then it says, calculate the new total surface area, a volume of the prison. So if you had before, you told me that the total surface area of the prison um, was originally 2448, but now we know total area, sorry, the total surface area goes up by nine. So I'll times that by nine and I can get my answer, yeah? Which is 22032 centimeters squared. And then if I go back to the volume, was eight, oh sorry, I'm not running two. The volume of the prism was 8100, and I'm gonna times it by 27 now, because that'll give me the new one. So the new one is 218700 centimetres cubed. All right, so they're easy marks as well. Okay, so here we go. A hiking group starts walking from a starting point in the direction of north. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our starting point. And as I said, we're gonna um, put our little compass in like that okay and they off they go walking north 48 degrees east so what they've done is they're going out here 
And when they say north 48 degrees um, east, that means in here is 48 degrees, okay? And off they go and they walk for two kilometers, so you know that's 2 km, and they'll get to another point. So when we get to the other point, we want to put our little compass on as well. Okay, they then turn south and walk on a bearing of south for, um, 55 degrees east. So when you do that one, you go south 55 degrees east. What that means is this in here is 55 degrees. Okay, so from there to there was the 55 degrees. All right, now that I've done that, can you have a look? If we look here, if this is 48, this one in here is also 48 degrees. Can you see that? Because of parallel lines. So if you have parallel lines and you go like that, if that's 48, then that's 48, okay? That's what I just said there. So, like that, okay? So, um, they then turn that, so we've done that for five kilometers. So we also knew this was 5 km and camp for lunch. So we called this lunch, whatever, yeah? And they walked, sorry, when they walked out here was the waterfall, all right. So construct a diagram of this information. That is fine what I've done there, okay? So hopefully already in your working out, you've worked that far out. Now, find the magnitude of SWL. So what they want, if you simplify my little triangle here, I've got S, W, and L. They want this angle in here. But I've already worked it out. It was 48 plus 55, which is equal to? Good. So 103 was the answer. Now, the next one, what is the true bearing? So that means all just degrees of the um, bearing of the starting point from W. So when you're at W, it means you, the from bit means I have to start at W's north and go all the way till I hit the line that's joining them there. Okay, so if I go to a straight line, wouldn't up to here be 180? Yeah? So then what's the next extra bit? You've already shown me in there, what was it? So what I'm saying here, from here to here, here to here is 180. Okay, I need to just go that little extra bit there. What is that? 48, wasn't it? Yeah? So, what is the true bearing? So, I've got 180 plus 48. So, it would be 228 degrees true. That's how you comment on that one. All right? And what is the true bearing of W from L? So... You need to then, for this one, you start at L's north and go all the way around till you get to there. Okay. So, wouldn't up to here be 270? Okay. So, I need this little angle in here. If this is 55 there and that's a right angle, what would this one be? In there, 55, 90 minus 55 would be 35. So if that's 35, then this purple one in there is 35. So I'm going to say 270 plus the 35, which would equal 305 degrees true. Okay, so can you see here, I would probably say my picture's getting a little bit small. I would be redrawing it on a piece of paper a bit bigger, just so I can see, yeah? Make sure you can see those parallel lines and get the alternate angles there. And then calculate the distance of L from S. So remember over here was L. So really, I want that distance there. 
that one there. And we did know that this was 2km and this was 5km. So maybe I'm just going to draw my, the way I normally would see it, A, B, C, call that little A, little B, little C. And I'll pop the numbers in. So this is 5, this is 2, and you told me that this was 103. So I need little a, because that's what S and L is. So um, I just use the formula. If I go through my triangle flow chart, is it right angle? No. Do I have more than one angle? No. So I'm going to use the cosine rule. So I'm going to use a square, a equals square root of b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay? And you get a to equal... Um, 5.79 so maybe just write out what your answer is so LS distance is 5.79 kilometers if they go a direct route from lunch spot back to the start point what is the total distance of the course so you simply just had to add up all the distances so they told you they'd done two then they told you they'd done five and then you just got asked to find the distance between the last two which was 5.79 so this is a very easy question of just adding them up and yes and that can happen and that's how easy it is all right so don't lose that one marker now what is the true bearing of l from the starting point um thing so i might redraw my little diagram here to because i it got squashy so i'm going to say this was the start okay so i had the start and then i went out to the waterfall and then we went out to whatever um what was it called the lunch spot i'm just gonna call it lunch spot okay okay and we knew a few bits of pieces we knew that that was sorry we knew that was 48 so we knew this was 48 um we knew uh this was 55 so we knew that was 35 or something here yeah. okay which we knew all right so when they say what is the bearing of l from starting point we need to start at the starting point and you've got to join these two lines up so i've got these two lines joined up and you need to go from its north until you hit there so can you see the bearing will actually be that one that 48 it'll be the bearing will equal 48 degrees plus that angle in there we're in it because we already know to here was 48 so i just need that one in there so i can use my triangle because we knew this was two we knew this was five and so I'm going to try it, and we know now that this is 5.79. So you know enough to work out that angle in there. And I ended up using what I did. I used the cosine rule. So I said cos um, A equaled B squared, because I knew all the sides of the triangle, over 2BC. So I called this one A, this B and this C and then I found that so I used that and I got that angle A was 57.32 set to two decimal places so I add those two so we get 105.32 all right okay from a top of a 40 meter cliff, Tizzy spots two swimmers 
Joe and David swimming in the water. Joe is 50 metres from the base and David is further away, uh, base of the cliff, and David is further away than that from the cliff. All right, so we probably want to set up a scenario. Even if they don't ask you to draw about it, we should probably do it. So I'm going to say this is Tizzy and he was on a 40 metre cliff. Then from the base of the cliff, we saw that we had... Um, Joe and they told me he was 50 meters and then they said the other guy who was David was a little bit further all right so um there we go what is the angle of elevation from Joe to Tizzy so angle of elevation would be in there and I've got a right angle triangle and I can use that one and that one. So I'm going to use that scenario. I'm going to use the 50, 40, and I'm going to do that. So the formula I'll be using is 10 because I have opposite over adjacent. So 10, the angle is going to inverse 10 of 40 over 50. So the angle of elevation ends up being... It says two decimal places, so 38.66 degrees. Okay, now it says the next question, find the direct distance between Tizzy and Joe. Okay, so the direct distance between Tizzy and Joe, they mean like along there, all right? So I'm still got the same triangle Try not to ever use anything they uh, you made you found. Try to always use data they gave you. So I'm going to use the 40 and the 50, and I'm going to say I want that. So I'm going to use Pythagoras for that one. So I'm going to go solve x squared equals 40 squared plus 50 squared, comma, x. I get x to equal 64.03. Um, so... I might just write the answer. The direct answer is 64.03 metres. We'll just go with two decimal places again because they said that before. All right. Find the distance between the base of the cliff and David. Given that David has an angle of elevation to tizzy, uh, angle of elevation of 25 degrees to tizzy on the cliff. So, if you know what you just know now, if we, write, if we draw out what we've got, we've got Tizzy up here, then they said they want to find the um, distance. So, find the distance between the base of the cliff and that. So, they want this. We know the cliff is 40, and we now got told that this was 25 degrees. Okay? So... I'm going to use, um, I've, I've got opposite and I've got adjacent, so I'm going to use tan again. But this time I'm finding something else. I'm going to go tan 25 equals 40 over x. And I can go solve, comma x. And I get that one. So really what I'm saying, length BD. So we're calling this base. The base equals to D 85.78. Okay, and then what is the distance between Joe and David? Well, you just told me now that this bit is 85.78. So what would the difference be? Yeah, 85.78 minus the 50. So the distance between the two of them is 25.78 metres. So this is 25.78 between them, them two. Okay, calculate the area of the triangle TJD. So you just join them up. So they want TJD. They want that triangle there. Okay, so there's a few things that you know. 
So I'm going to draw it here. So we've got T, we've got J, and we've got D. And they want to know the area of this triangle. You just told me that the distance here was 25.78. And, yep. I'm getting a 35.78. Oh, did I write that one? Yep, sorry. So that was, wait a minute, here. Yeah, sorry, 35.78. Yep, that's bad. So 35.78. You also knew this was 25 degrees because they told you that before, the angle of elevation up. Okay. And you've worked out a few things. You've worked out um, the direct distance, I believe, between T and J. That was up there. What did we work that to be? 64.03, yeah? Um, so there's a few ways you can work it out um, if you like, but I'm going to try... I also know this angle in here because you told me this red one was over here was 38.66. So this is a straight line there. So I can work out that one in there, which would be 180 minus the 38.66. So that one is going to equal 141.34. And once I've got all them, I can use the sign rule for area, which I mean, the one I mean, I'm going to use area equals a half AB sine C. And I'm going to use this angle here that I just found out. All right. And I get an area, once you plug all that in, to be 715.59 metres squared. All right.